I want to talk about where do we start, Yeah. okay? Because you just threw a whole lot at us, and I want to make sure that everybody listening mm. leaves with a better understanding of how their body is designed to heal itself and specific changes that we can make in order to activate that power inside of us. Yep. And so I want to talk a little bit about... Um, you write so much about food, and we've already started talking about it. And in particular, I'm hu I'm a huge fan of your book, The Blood Sugar Solution, mm -hmm. which is where I think you're one of the first people to start talking about the vagus nerve and the power yeah. of the vagus nerve, which yeah. we talk about on this show constantly. Yeah. And The Ultra Mind Solution is yeah. a book- All these book goodies. Oh, yeah. I, all <laughs> these book goodies. But listen, you know, everybody, and I'm going to have you explain it. You know, you probably, you may have heard that your gut is called the second brain, yeah. but what you may not know is that during the formation of you as a human being, mm. the same embryonic clump that forms the brain also forms the gut, and they separate, but they stay connected yeah. via neurotransmitters. Yeah. So I think about it like almost like 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 goop. Like you break goop in half and it's got those stringy sections yeah, and yeah. part of it becomes your brain and the second part becomes the gut. Well, they and, call it your gut brain or your second brain. Yes. And that they talk to each other all the Completely, time. Completely, yeah. And so where I want to start with this is, can you explain the connection between your gut and your gut health and your overall health? And then we're going to get into specific mental health issues that people struggle with and the gut. Absolutely. You know, um, what was really amazing to me, Mel, is I began to practice functional medicine. I began to, you know, treat people's guts. I would help their immune system get better. I'd get them on anti-inflammatory diets. I'd, and 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 as a side effect, they, they would report to me that my ADD is better, my depression has gone, my panic attacks are gone, my mood is better, I'm this uh, sleeping better, all these things. I'm like, really? <laughs> What's going on here? And I began to really inquire about this this process of how everything below the neck is influencing everything above the neck. Yes. So the subtitle of the Ultramind Solution is how to fix your broken brain by fixing your body first. Right? Mm. And what's really amazing is the microbiome is this new frontier. In addition to the understanding of the gut brain and the gut nervous system and the brain nervous system and how they're connected, and, and, and that's a real thing. Yep. There's constant communication. There's more yep. neurotransmitters in your gut than your brain. But... What's now happening is the understanding of this sea of bacteria in there that are all speaking to you every minute. And I just had talked to a scientist who was researching a particular microbe in the gut. And it's a big word. It's called Ackermansia. Don't worry about it. It's just one of the bacteria that lives in there. I already forgot it. Okay. And, and what's amazing is as they were fermenting this, growing this bacteria to put in a probiotic, which is very powerful for many things for regulating metabolism and mood and blood sugar and everything they discovered that this this vat of the byproducts of this bacteria was something called GABA. Now, GABA is a calming neurotransmitter. Oh. When people take Valium, that's what it's doing. It's activating the GABA receptors in the brain to calm you down and relax you. So when you think if you have the right bacteria in your gut, you're producing compounds and neurotransmitters that are going to your brain and making you either relaxed and calm or depressed. There's a woman at Harvard, Uma Nadu, who's, who's studying very actively the microbiome and depression as a way to treat mental illness, fix the gut. Wow. Okay, I wanna, I wanna have you define a few things for us. Mm. So you've used the word inflammation mm. a lot. Yeah. What the hell does that mean? Well, everybody knows. You know, you no, cut, everybody you cut, does you, not know. You got a sore throat. That's inflammation. You cut your finger and it gets red and pussy. That's inflammation. Oh. Right? No. I yeah. never <laughs> thought about it that way. <laughs> you sprain your knee. It swells up. That's well, that I know. <laughs> that's inflammation. But, but, when, but, but when you functional medicine but, doctors yes, we have, throw talking, around yes. the world word inflammation, yes, yes. inflammation here, infl I'm, I don't even know what you're talking yeah, about. I, I, so we know that inflammation on the outside, what it looks like. Yes. Right? That's what I was just referring to. Yes. But there's inflammation on the inside. Oh. And, uh, and it's silent inflammation. You know, if your brain's inflamed, it, it, it doesn't get red and swollen, but you get depressed and you have ADD and you have personality issues and you can't sleep and you're anxious, right? Oh. So 
we're now understanding that the inflammation, this hidden inflammation is occurring inside of us, and it's leading to all the diseases of Western civilization, heart disease, cancer, diabetes, dementia. The aging process itself is called inflammaging, which wow. is one of the hallmarks of aging I talk about in Young Forever yeah. in my book. And the, the beautiful thing is that we now know what is driving the inflammation on the inside. What's causing us to have inflammation on well, the inside? Our gut is a big player. Okay. There's 70% of our immune systems in our gut. And if we don't eat the right food, if our microbiome isn't the right bugs in there, they're nasty bugs. And we get leaky gut. And that means the body can't filter out the food and proteins from food and, and uh, the bacteria in there. And you leak them across the intestinal lining. And guess what? Your immune system's right there. And it goes, holy shit, what is all this? And right. starts creating inflammation. So Got you get it. asthma, or you get arthritis, or you get depression, or you get diabetes, or you get dementia, because the gut bacteria and the whole system in there is broken down. The Can other, I ask one more question? Yeah. Because I think this is really important for everybody to understand. Let's back up a minute and talk about how your gut is supposed to function. So when yeah. it's functioning in the correct way, because I only learned about leaky gut mm. because we had a daughter that struggled with disordered eating. Yeah. And she was constantly talking about how she felt fat. And I thought, oh my God, we have not only this issue with restriction and her not eating, but we now have body dysmorphia. And we went to see a nutritionist that was a functional, holistic mm -hmm. nutritionist. And she came back and said, through the disordered eating, your daughter has destroyed her gut. Her gut. Yeah. There, are, there are no positive bacteria strains. Yeah. So the food hits her gut. Yeah. And without positive bacteria strains, the food doesn't break down. Yeah. And so she you does feel bloated. You get bloated. And, 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 and then like all of this acidic crap, because the food is not digesting properly because there's no positive bacteria, all this acidic crap leaks through the wall of the gut and then goes through the nervous system and the anxiety right. spikes. That's and right. so this was brand new to me. Yeah. So can you just explain to everybody when your gut is in balance, how is it functioning properly? Because I think that'll give everybody the ability to then understand yeah the impact of it not functioning properly. Well, I mean, you pr pretty much shouldn't know it's there. It should do its job, right? You shouldn't be bloated, distended. You shouldn't have heartburn. You, should, you shouldn't have gas. You should feel fine. You really? really? People when, go through life without all that? I mean, you can have a little gas, but it's not like, you know, it's that's kind of a normal thing. But I, I think, you know, if people are really noticing their gut function, yes, something's wrong. Okay. And then you just look in the toilet. You should have a perfectly formed log yeah it just floats a little bit yep. and that's it and you should feel the urge to go and you should go and it should take a couple minutes and that's it and and that is not the case for most people in yes. the western civilization there was a guy named uh, dennis burkett who, who studied uh, people in africa and uh, he was looking at the hunter gatherers who'd moved to the cities and and the differences in the health outcomes in these two different populations between the hunter gatherers and the city dwellers who were the same genetically and he found that the city dwellers had lots of heart disease and autoimmune disease and diabetes and all these western diseases whereas the hunter-gatherers had none. And what he noticed was that the hunter-gatherer stool weight, the size of their poop, was two pounds a day. The city dwellers was four ounces. What? Yeah, because of all the fiber and all the plant foods they were eating that fed the good bugs in their gut. Meaning the people that were hunter-gatherers had a better... A better diet. Yeah, and I would yeah. also imagine, and we're going to get into this, that the stressors of living in the city and the stressors of that kind of life also yeah. impacted the body functioning. Totally. I mean totally. And and there's many there's many pathways through the which this works, but the the gut and the microbiome is a is a huge factor. So we 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 know now how to identify imbalances in there. We know how to test for it. We know how to treat it. Not most traditional doctors, but most functional medicine doctors. This is the focus of a lot of the way we help people is by optimizing their gut function. So that's a big cause of inflammation. The other big cause, and this is also it was mediated through the through the gut, which is our diet. Because when we eat, we're not just feeding us. We're feeding the thousand critters that live down there. The, there's probably 10 
trillion cells in there that we're feeding. In every, your gut. In your gut. And many cells in your own body. There's probably 100 times as much DNA as your own body. And and half, probably half the metabolites in your blood come from the bacteria, not from you. And they affect everything that's going on. And if they're the bad guys, you're going to feel bad. And if they're the good guys, you're going to feel good. And so when the when you eat sugar and starch and processed food and artificial sweeteners and thickeners and gums and additives, they just destroy the microbiome. Mm. Plus, you know, pesticides and glyphosate and all this stuff just kills it. And so we, we really have a gut crisis in, in this country, but we also have the food crisis. And the food crisis is really what's driving it. And I, I think if people understand how powerful food is, they don't, they don't really have to listen to me. I, I mean, you can listen to this podcast. You can listen to a million other podcasts. Just for 10 days, change your diet and see what happens. Not for a year or 10 years, but 10 days. Anybody can do anything for 10 days. And when you do that, you literally take away all the potential inflammatory foods, all the foods that are causing you to have issues, which is typically gluten, dairy, sugar, processed So what foods. is the 10-day? Like, well, get, just give us simple rules that you want everybody listening to try. This is a dare. Let's, just, let's go through a sample menu for okay. a day. But it's basically... Protein and vegetables, nuts and seeds, and berries. And so you. Okay, base- hold on. You said that very fast. Protein, <laughs> vegetables, vegetables, nuts and seeds, and nuts berries, and seeds and berries, and lots of good fats, olive oil, avocados. Okay. So it's basically breakfast could be, for example, uh, a couple of eggs with sliced tomatoes and avocado with olive oil on top. Lunch could be a big salad with lots of different veggies and tomatoes. I could throw a can of wild salmon on there. Yeah. Put in some pumpkin seeds. You know, just. Lots of good plant Very food. colorful. Very colorful. And dinner might be, you know, some uh, a big piece of fish or chicken or, or some, a nice small piece of meat with three quarters of your plate should be vegetables. So Three quarters of your yeah, plate, Yeah, so like everybody. I'll have, like the other night I had like a, a purple sweet potato. I had some roasted mushrooms. I had, um, you know, uh, I can tell you to have like a roasted eggplant. Whatever whatever you kind of get excited about. Broccolini. I make cruciferous vegetables every day. These are the broccoli What did family. you say? Cruciferous vegetables. What the hell were cruciferous? Bro- broccoli, broccoli, basically. The broccoli what, what family. What does cruciferous mean? It means broccoli, basically. Broccoli, collard, <laughs> collards, cabbage, Brussels sprouts, you know, all those. The uh, fibery crap your grandmother served. Is that well, what you're saying? It's, it's this family of vegetables. It's a super family. Got it. Because it, it actually does, detoxes your cells. It, it helps prevent cancer. Wow. It boosts all the detox hormones in your, I mean, uh, molecules in your body. So, so I want to stop you real quick because mm. you posted something two days ago. I did. <laughs> <laughs> what that said that was uh i'd never really thought about it this way and it was you'll probably say it better than me but it was it was a very simple post that was like your cells your brain cells like all of this stuff your skin that all is continuing to grow it doesn't just grow out of thin air it 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 actually is impacted and grows from the raw materials that you yeah, get it. And so would yeah. you rather have cells that are made from a bag of Doritos? Exactly. <laughs> or cells made from a salad or a piece of fish. And when you boil it down that way, like holy cow, what I put in my mouth is what I become. Yeah. Absolutely. It, it, you literally become what you eat. I mean, I, I just had someone on my podcast at Doctor's Pharmacy talking about the difference between, for example, pasture-raised bison and uh, uh, p- bat bison, they were fed corn and, and feedlot bison, which are still better and than And what cows. lab bison? Feed, feedlot bison, meaning fat, grown on a factory farm. Okay, you know? got it. And they measured 15 different 100 metabolites. And what they found was so different among the same genetically identical bison, one had all these incredible molecules that come from plants because it was eating all these grasses. It had and different it fatty acids. It, it, it had different had vitamins life. in it, and different yep. minerals in it. And, and, and it was just so profound. So you are what you eat, but you also are whichever you're eating it, right? Mm. And the whole thing goes up the chain. And, and we, we really have to get how powerful food is and do an experiment. Don't listen to me. Don't listen to Mel. Listen to your own body. Your body's the smartest doctor in the room. <laughs> It'll tell you what works and what doesn't. And when you stop this or that, you go, well, God, no, wait a minute. My joints don't hurt. Or wait a minute. my I'm not having terrible reflux or heartburn anymore. Or, I don't have migraines. What happened? Or my mood is better. Hmm, what's going on? It's what you're eating. <laughs> wow. What are the top things that people should in this kind of 10-day window stop eating i mean anything that comes in a package basically i mean if it's canned you know sardines or salmon that's fine but basically anything comes in a package can or a box get rid of it if it's sugar no if sugar sweetened beverages no alcohol no 
and I, you know, it's not like I'm a food Nazi, but I, what I'm saying is get rid of uh, grains and beans for a short time because a lot of people have inflammation from that if they have a gut issue. Grains and beans are healthy and they're good for you, but for some people, they can be a problem, right? It's just like peanuts are good for people, but if some people- Well, what's the universal one? It's no gluten. No gluten, no sugar, no dairy, no alcohol, no processed food. Do you have any fun? Absolutely. <laughs> I have so much fun. I have so much fun every day. I'm just kidding. My whole life is fun. And I don't feel restricted. I don't starve myself. And the thing is, these foods are addictive, Mel. So people think, I got to have, I got to have, well, ah, sugar. Well, can I have artificial? I know what people are listening, thinking about. They're thinking, oh, Dr. Hyman, can I have uh, artificial sweeteners? Or can I have, you know, yes, stevia? stevia. Or can I have, well, is stevia like, okay? Every, everybody's going through their head. And if you yes. were having this inner dialogue right now, I guarantee you, you have biological addiction to sugar because you're trying to find a way out. You know, mm. I'm going to stop smoking, but I'm going to vape or I'm going to chew Nicorette gum. Well, that's not getting rid of your addiction. Yes. Right? And I think it's not your fault. And this is a, probably uh, one of the biggest problems I have with the narrative in America, that we are blaming the person who's overweight for their problem. It's your fault that you're eating too much and not exercising enough because that's the solution to weight loss. It's all about calories in, calories out. It's all about moderation. And if you can't do it, there's something wrong with you. Yeah. That's just a big fat lie. And that keeps people feeling ashamed about themselves. It yep. keeps them from being empowered to know what to do. It keeps the food industry free of responsibility. And it's uh, one of the most unfortunate narratives that we have. And then we get this whole body positive movement. And I think it's important for people to feel good about themselves. Yes. But the whole idea of healthy to any weight, there are some for sure that are healthy when they're, when they're a bigger size. But the truth is when you look at the biology of it, only 6.8% of Americans are metabolically healthy. Meaning that means they do they have normal blood sugar, cholesterol, blood pressure, they're not overweight, and they don't have heart disease. Like that's 6.8% of us. That means 93% of us are somewhere in the spectrum from normal to pre-diabetes, to and, diabetes. And, and what you're here to say is it's not your fault because not. the way that food is manufactured, it is addictive yeah. and it is screwing up your body chemistry and it is causing like a whole litany of things yeah, that I you mean, aren't even thinking that the, my diet and the way that processed food is getting metabolized is causing this inflammation that makes my brain not work right, that impacts focus and energy and mood and sleep and all of these things. And all of your work points to the fact that one of the places that all of us can start is by just doing an experiment for 10 days where you stop the dairy, stop the gluten, stop the sugar, and you eat a colorful meal of Whole foods and yeah. vegetables. Three quarters of the plate is vegetables and have a protein. There is your homework for 10 days and report back everybody. Because you've seen over and over and over again that in that few, that small of a window, people have remarkable results. Yeah. I mean, that's the key. Because if, if people go, you know, this is a long slog and it'll take me years, you, you're not going to want to do it. But if, right. you, if you, for a short time, reset it's like, you know, when your computer's just going and yeah. some program's hung up and that yeah. crazy rainbow ball, which I yeah. want to kill, is spinning around, you know? Yeah. You just restart your computer and then all of a sudden it works. So this yes. is like the restart and, and has in, enormous benefits because for the first time, people understand what they're doing impacts how they feel. Yeah. I almost feel like this is like an oil change. Exactly. We got to get that nasty exactly. ass oil out there and glug, 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 get your yeah. gut working right. Can we talk about the impact of the gut with anxiety and yeah. what's your recommendation? If somebody struggles with anxiety, what do they need to do to heal their gut and how will that impact anxiety? Well, anxiety can be caused from many things, right? From, you know, life stresses, from trauma, from uh, environmental toxins, from your microbiome, from eating too much sugar. I mean, there's a whole list. So mm -hmm. functional medicine is about getting to the root cause. Yep. And anxiety is a symptom. It's like saying you have a headache, right? Uh, well, did someone hit you in the head with a hammer? Or do you have a migraine? Are you eating gluten? Did you not sleep enough? Did you have a hangover? Do you know, have you know, a brain tumor? You, know, like, right. you have an aneurysm. Like, why do you have a headache? <laughs> right. So anxiety is just like saying I have a headache. Or depression is like saying I have a headache. Okay. It doesn't mean anything other than what your symptoms are. The oh. question is, what's the cause? And that is what functional medicine is so good about. And so the gut plays a big role. So, But I really just start with the simple lifestyle practices. Do a 10-day reset. You know, Do some simple movement. Take a walk. Do some simple mindfulness practices. Do your take five or hit what do you do, high five. Yeah. <laughs> I do take five, which is five breaths five times a day. You know, it's simple. Like before you eat every time, before you go to bed, take five breaths in slowly, in and out for five seconds. How the hell does that help? 
it resets your nervous system because every time you breathe, you move your diaphragm and your diaphragm is this place where the vagus nerve goes through. The vagus mm-hmm. nerve is your relaxation nerve. Yeah. So how do you how do you turn on the automatic parts of your nervous system that you don't really think about, right? You don't, I'm gonna make my heart beat at 62 beats a minute or I'm gonna make sure I have 14 breaths a minute or your body just knows what to do. That's your nervous right. system. You just and, need to find the switch and, and this flip is, it. Yeah, that's the beautiful thing. So you can actually use your breath to reset your nervous system and to calm everything down and lower adrenaline or cortisol or all the stress hormones and, and reset your system. But it doesn't take a lot. I wanna, I wanna just come back to something you said in the very beginning. Mm. Over and over and over again, you're proving simple ways that your body is designed to heal itself. Yeah. So five breaths, deep breaths. Right, walk us through how you do yeah, the five just, breaths. Just go like, take a deep breath in to five through your nose. And five out. Do that five times. It's not that hard. <laughs> yeah, but you, nobody does I just does did it, it once and I feel already I, are, I feel better too. <laughs> I and, and again, it's proof that if you do the right input, mm. your body responds. Yeah, we're just looking out there for a solution. And I, and I think it's like Dorothy in a ruby red slipper. She was running around Oz trying to find a way to get back to Kansas. And the truth is she had a ruby red slippers the whole time. And all she had to do was click her heels three times and get home. You know, I think it, we all are like Dorothy. We have ruby red slippers. We just don't know we have them and we don't know how to click them. And this is really what my work is about. It's what my book, Young Forever, is focused on. How do we activate our healing systems? Whether you're 25 or 75, you can activate these systems and feel better now and put um, yourself on the track for a longer, healthier life. Wow. Um, let's talk about ADHD. And what did you say? ADHD. What? Oh, okay. We st- <laughs> <laughs> I even fell for that. That was good. <laughs> let's talk about ADHD. What were we talking about? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Let's talk about ADHD and the gut. How yeah. is healing your gut? Oh God! Helping I gotta, with ADHD. I got to tell you a story. Tell me a story. I, I, I had a. I, it, it was one of the books. Um, that I wrote, young, uh, the Ultra Mind Solution that had this kid's story, in, and it was what really got me on this track of thinking about writing this book. It was a twelve-year-old kid who had severe ADHD when he was younger. It was a kindergarten on Adderall, and kicked out of kindergarten. I mean, who gets kicked out of kindergarten? Wow! And just struggling at twelve years old. His mother was at her wits' end, um, and you know, come behavior problems and just struggling. Um, and the mother brought him in and I did a full evaluation because I don't just say, tell me about your ADHD. I said, tell me about your bowel movements. Tell me about what's happening with this and that and the other thing. It turned out he had asthma, he had irritable bowel syndrome, he had headaches at night, he had muscle cramps, he had anal itching, which is a clue about something. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's often a sign of yeast issues or... Oh. Yeah. So uh, he, he had all these problems. And and he was on seven different medications from multiple different That's doctors okay. on asthma medications on he got medications on ADD medications on you know, mood medic I mean it was just it was a mess, and his mother brought his handwriting and to, to show me before, and we can post this on your show notes before and, and, and I started treating him and then two months later after and all okay. we all we did was clean up his diet he was kid was living on junk food never ate a vegetable in his life massively nutritionally deficient he was deficient in magnesium which caused muscle cramps he was deficient in zinc because he didn't ever need any pumpkin seeds or vegetables he had uh, and his immune system was dysregulated he had also a B vitamin deficiencies he was having gut issues with bad bacteria he had gluten sensitivity he had yeast overgrowth he had a little bit of lead in his system wow. and all this stuff that was really easy to treat all i did was basically take out the bad food put in a, a whole foods diet a little bit of elimination that we talked about i gave him basic multivitamins some fish oil magnesium and vitamin d some probiotics kind of reset his gut and the mother brings him back 2 months later and she says, not only is his ADD gone, but all of his other symptoms are gone. His migraines, his, his irritable bowel, his asthma, his skin issues, his anal itching, it's all gone. Congestion, sinus issues, all gone. And his handwriting went from totally illegible, you know these kids with really bad penmanship, yeah. to perfectly legible, perfect penmanship. And I didn't send him to a handwriting school. All I did was fix his brain by fixing his body, by fixing his gut. I, I'm I'm processing this. Yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm processing this because I have a visual to share mm. with um, you listening to us. 
And then I want to tell a quick story because mm. I'm starting to feel like ding, 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 ding with our own son. Mm-hmm. So um, the visual I want to give everybody because it just whew, hit me is, you know, when somebody has an allergic reaction, like mm. they get stung by a bee mm. or they eat something that mm. they're allergic to and their face turns bright red or, you know, something swells on their body. That inflammation that you're seeing on the outside is the body reacting to something that it can't process. Or that correct? it doesn't like. What is, what it, can you describe what an allergic reaction means medically? Because I then want to tie it to something that I'm now thinking about when it comes to the gut. So what does it mean when you have an allergic reaction? You have yeah. allergies. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's really two main kind of allergies. Okay. One is a true allergy. So if you eat peanuts, right. your tongue swells up, your lungs shut down, you can't breathe, and you can die. That's, Correct. You get anaphylaxis. That's yep. a life-threatening emergency, a yep. bee sting allergy. That's a certain hype, type, we call it type one okay. allergy, which is super fast, super quick, and you can die from it. EpiPen there, people. Yes, EpiPen. EpiPen people, right? Then there's the delayed sensitivity. It's not a true allergy, yep. but it can create sort of low-grade long-term symptoms. Okay. So if you eat bread, you might have brain fog. Is that a true allergy? Mm. No. But is it sensitivity? Yes. Yes. Right? And I think people don't have, I mean, I know, for example, I, if I eat dairy that's from a regular feedlot cow, I will get congestion and snotty immediately and yep. I'll probably get pimples the next day. Yep. But if I have, for example, sheep or goat products that are from regenerative ca- uh, sheep that have A2 casein, which is not inflammatory, yep. then I don't, right? So I, I, it's really not so much about the 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 type one we're so much worried mm-hmm. about it's all these other types of food reactions that are slow and delayed and create this low grade inflammation that creates all these symptoms for people yes so i wanted to bring that visual in for everybody because i think it's really helpful you know when when for me personally um i don't know if it's the dyslexia i just don't know if I, it's because i'm a visual learner <clears throat> i love to have something i can think about visually to help me process large large amounts of information. And so when I think about my husband, for example, who's allergic to bees, mm. he has an empi pen. Mm. I wish he would carry it around a little bit more. <laughs> but when he gets stung with a bee, it's not life-threatening, but it's scary. Yeah. And it occurred to me a couple of years ago, huh, I wonder if like these sensitivities and these allergies that people have to food that may not cause swelling or redness in your face or breakouts or whatever that you can't see. I wonder if all of this is screwing up the way that our body is able to function. Absolutely. And and it interferes with your body's way to function. And so when you think about it like those kind of type one ones that, mm, and you, you mm. just explain it like, if you have a sensitivity to wheat or your body just can't handle the big company manufactured foods because of the chemicals and the dyes and the crap that are in it. It is causing your whole body to have almost like this This reaction. smoldering inflammation. The smoldering inflammation, just like a bee sting causes Chris's face to blow up. And so when you think about it that way, it makes so much sense to go, holy cow. If you just simply were to switch your diet from all this processed crap, grab and go, and you were to put on your plate a little bit of protein and three quarters vegetables, it would probably calm your body down totally. and your thoughts down. And here's what I'm going, holy fuck, this is crazy. Because our son, exactly what you're talking about, Oakley in fourth grade was diagnosed with severe dyslexia. The kid could not read. He was so like blah, 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 that he literally snowed everybody for about a year. And then they got to the point where you can't just raise your hand first to make something yeah. up and that makes people think that you read it and the math problems are getting harder so you can't. So the gig was up. Cannot read. It looked, honest to God, like he was writing with his feet. His, yeah. his dysgraphia yeah. was yeah. so bad. Exactly. He could not sit still. So we right. pull him out of public mm-hmm. school. We put him in the Carroll School yeah. outside of Boston. Fortunate enough to get him in there only about language-based learning. Mm-hmm. And they immediately medicate him for ADHD. Mm. He hated the meds. Yeah. But it was the only way he could sit still in class. Yeah. Fast forward to about eighth grade, he starts advocating for himself. I'm not eating meds. I'm not taking these meds. I'm not taking these meds. I'm not taking these meds. We're like, fine. But if we get a report from school 
that you are bouncing around the classroom and you can't sit still, we're going to have to find a different solution. This school happened to have a cafeteria where all the kids ate and it had a whole like food healthy, healthy, options, healthy yeah. options. Like yeah. there were no unhealthy options. There was the salad bar. There was the homemade yeah, yeah. soup. There was a protein. He gets into ninth grade. When I tell you this kid is a totally different yeah, it's person. Amazing. Yeah. His handwriting is different. That's what yeah. made me think yeah, of this. Yeah. His ability to focus is different. He has not been on meds now for three years. Yeah. You would not know that this kid had severe dyslexia. No. He is just, I don't even know who he is. It's yeah. like destroying it's right. it's it in right. school. He is present. Yeah. And he eats vegetables. Yeah. Like he has a totally different diet. Yeah. Like yeah. I'm sitting here going, holy shit, like the kid used to eat Mac and cheese. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Chicken nuggets. <laughs> I'll do it. That'll do it. Don't put a vegetable on my plate. <laughs> I'll do it. <laughs> yeah, it's really true. And I and it's like- And I'm just processing this because I'm like, I think I this is a major part of, of why he is transformed. And Mel, it's not just ADD. Everything that goes on in our brain above our neck is governed in the same way. We may not have such severe symptoms. We may not have asthma. We may not have severe ADD, but we may have- fatigue or brain fog or just you know depression or anxiety well, let's talk or, about depression right? boy do i have an incredible gift for you today you are getting world class medical and research backed simple tactics today to improve your health to improve your energy, to improve your vitality. We are gonna do some healing today from the inside out. Who the hell am I talking about? Dr. Mark Hyman. 